the man accused of masterminding Namibia's biggest fishing corruption scandal, had the world at his feet. He was paid a total package of around 30 million Namibian dollars a year from his daily investment job. His net worth was estimated to be 1 billion Namibian dollars in mostly cash, making him one of the richest people in Namibia. That world came crashing down on 27 November last year, when he was arrested for alleged corruption, fraud and money laundering. It saw the emergence of Articlipi as one of the key players in the fish rod scandal. That includes alleged corruption deals of more than two billion Namibian dollars. Articlipi, the last born of four children, was politically connected from birth. His late father, Tauno Hatuku, a church leader, was a respected Swapo member. His father died under mysterious circumstances after being persuaded to go into exile in Angola, where he was appointed head political commissioner at Lubango. Artuklipi was six months old at the time. Some believe that one of the driving forces in Artuklipi's life can be traced back to the father he never knew. It was the prelude to a long and complex relationship with the ruling party. Artuklipi's rise to the top started around 20 years ago. His eventual downfall would prove to be the slippery world of fish deals. As he established himself, Artuklipi all but became embedded among Namibia's ruling elite, some of whom ended up being his business partners, others his friends. Whether it was his intention or whether it was the affirmation of being accepted, he seemed to relish the position he found himself in. He was not shy when it came to bragging about his connections. He often let slip that he delivered President Hage Gaingob's wedding suit in February 2015. Hautikulipi was apparently in London when he was asked if he could pick up the incoming president's navy blue suit made by Gangok's personal tailor in London. He delivered the suit just a few days before Gangok said I do on Valentine's Day. Up until last year, the sky appealed to be to the limit for Hautikulipi. He had thriving businesses, a multi-million dollar farm, a mansion outside Vindu, friends in high places, and a top paying job. But he wanted more. At Otapi last year, Hatukulipi boasted that he was building apartments for 80 million euros, about 1.2 billion Namibian dollars, in the Spanish capital, Madrid, in a suburb frequented by football stars. By November, though, the high flying financier had fallen from grace. He and five close associates were arrested in connection with the fish rod scandal. Among others, Autokalipi, Saki Shangala, and Bernard Essel have been charged with money laundering, bribery, and corruption in exchange for granting lucrative fishing rights to Icelandic company Sam Hoji. Autokalipi's arrest led to the collapse of some of his assets, at least in Namibia. Some painted him as the mastermind who pieced together the fish rod scheme, which allegedly enriched his family and friends and is claimed to have been used to fund Swapo's and Gaingob's election campaigns. He has direct ties to all six suspects awaiting trial in his fishing scandal. They include To try and understand how Tukulipi traced his footsteps. He was born on 21 June 1975 in Vindu. His father, Tauna Tukulipi, joined the liberation struggle in exile when James Tukulipi was only six months old. He went to St. Paul's College and Centaurus Secondary School here in Vindu. He graduated from the University of Namibia with a Bachelor of Commerce. 
1998, how to Kulipi worked for stockbroking firm HSBC Securities, Namibia. He moved to Metropolitan Namibia as an investment analyst, later landing a senior job as portfolio manager at Alliance Capital. In 2002, he moved to Cape Town, eventually joining Investec Asset Management and was promoted to head its Namibian subsidiary. Business. It's unclear what inspired James and Shangala to name some of their companies, but there appears to be a sequence. Kambandara means try, Ukangwari, while Otafika means we have arrived in Oshibamba. The combination of two names of their companies, Anganeni Imona and Olea Investment, appear to send out a message. Anganeni Imona Olea can be loosely translated as come together, wealth is here in Oshibamba. Articulipi has interest in rail construction, real estate, catering, and finance. At first glance, his businesses appear to be genuinely entrepreneurial, with offices, staff, and operational activities across the country. However, closer scrutiny shows that his business empire was mainly built using his proximity to power. One method was to create joint ventures between his companies and state-owned agencies. A sustainable business model because government revenue is often guaranteed in agreements that last longer than 20 years and in some cases are open-ended. Hanganeni owns Hanganeni Mona, a 800-bed hostel development at the University of Namibia, constructed for 160 million Namibian dollars. The partnership between Hanganeni and UNAM is for 30 years. His joint ventures with the state often included people in powerful positions. In 2005, Artukulipi's company, Anganeni Investments, had at least three politically connected owners when the company won a $120 million state petroleum enrichment deal in 2004. These people were permanent secretary in the office of the president, she was vice chairperson of the UNAM Council when a company, Anganeni, won the deal to construct hostels at UNAM. Levi Hongamo, director and economic advisor to the president. Shangala, special assistant to the attorney general. In December 2011, Hautukulipi's D&M rail construction won a $150 million contract to renovate a 400-kilometer stretch of railway line between Kranzberg and Tumen. Essau appoints James Hartigan as Fish Corps Board Director and Chairperson. In March of the same year, Hartigan tells Stephenson that he had made sure Essau and his counterpart in Angola, Victoria de Barros Neto, secured fishing quotas because serious political capital is at play. On May 24, 2014, Artuklipi registered Tundavala Investment Limited in Dubai. On October 31, 2014, his friend Gustavo starts making payments to Artuklipi's Tundavala Invest. Namibia's Anti-Corruption Commission noted a transfer worth 120 million Namibian dollars in alleged fish rod money to Tundavala Invest. In December 2015, James Hartukulipi threatens to sue the Namibian for reporting that his appointment as chair of the National Fishing Corporation of Namibia was against the law. On December 2016, Hartukulipi traveled to Angola and visited a fish factory run by businessman Adrian Lowe. The following month, Hartukulipi oversaw the formation of a joint venture between Lowe and Fish Corp. The partnership was called Sea Flower Pelagic Processing, whose shareholder is now accused of 75 million in alleged money laundering.
I met James during the visit. The first time I met him was during the visit to Angola. We, we showed him our land-based plants. I found him to be very intelligent. I found him to, to be charismatic. Um, he understood the fishing industry. Uh, he understood business uh, that I could clearly pick up very, very quickly. Uh, he was mandated uh, by the government, which he also showed us, uh, to, to basically restore and recover Fishco. He indicated to us at the time that Fishco went through very bad. It's an old company in the beer, started in 1993. They were in deep trouble, uh, and he was tasked to, to restore or recover Fishco for that matter. Um, the fact that he was also head of Investec Namibia uh, really put me at ease and, uh, and that also indicated or explained to me why um, he had very good, uh, can I say, boardroom manners. You know, as a businessman, he could catch something within the first three seconds, you know, which was, was quite nice to deal with. Actually. Last year, the Namibian reported that Investec Asset Management Namibia manages around 17.2 billion in state funds, including 16 billion from GIPF, 800 million from the Social Security Commission, and 300 million from the Guardian Fund for Orphans. 